times it's just a song like that that slows us down long enough to think about reality. And you'll never listen to a more beautiful song. I think that was Donna singing. I believe it was. That was beautiful. Haven't heard that old song in a long time. Beautiful song of faith. We meet this afternoon in a worship service of a living Christ. We meet in a memorial service for Marie Brooks, 94, of Monticello. Departed this life Thursday, April 11, at Drew Memorial Hospital. She was born October 4, 1907, in Drew County. She was the widow of Cars Brooks, a member of Pauline Baptist Church, retired from Burlington Industries. She is preceded in death by her parents, Madison Daniels and Laura Wilson Daniel. Also four brothers, three sisters. Survivors include one son, Joel Brooks of Monticello, Two brothers, Pete McDaniel of Little Rock, Damon McDaniel of Houghton, Louisiana, one sister, Bethel Chapman of Monticello, three grandchildren, two great-grandchildren, and two great-great-grandchildren. Let's bow and pray. Father, for for all that you've given us, we're grateful. We praise you today, Father, from everlasting to everlasting. And Father, we thank you for the life of this dear lady. Father, we thank you for giving us physical life and, Father, giving us spiritual life even more so bless in our time of worship bless this family Father we pray that when all has been said and done that all of us will be reminded of how beautiful heaven must be in Jesus name Yeah. 
thought the first song was good. That's beautiful. Beautiful song about amazing grace. It is an honor for me to be here this afternoon. Uh, it's an honor because uh, some of you guys have been real close to me for a lot of years. And we've been friends. And I learned a long time ago that Friendship is one of the grandest things in the world. I've often said that, I've heard my mother say that if it wasn't for the good Lord and our friends, we wouldn't make it. Well, Joel and family today, if it wasn't for the good Lord, we wouldn't be here. And we are here, and it is friendship that... Uh, it keeps us going. It's sort of the glue that holds us together. And so I'm always honored when I'm asked to do something like this. I tried to think when I received this phone call about uh, how I first knew uh, Miss Marie. And uh, if you will, Mr. Carts and, of course, Joel. You see... Carson and Marie were friends of mine a long, long time ago. I was talking with Joel today, and he told me how old he was. And I said, no, you aren't. He said, yes, I am. I said, no, you aren't. We were on the phone. And he said, Brother Bud, your problem is you don't want to admit that you're old now. Well, <laughs> Joel, I guess we... We've lived a while, haven't we, son? Uh, a lot of people have probably forgotten, but back in 61, Pauline Baptist Church was still over on the east side of town on the corner of Dillard and Jackson Streets. And uh, that's when I came here. And uh, when we, when we bought the six acres and decided to build where the church is, is today, uh, I had already encountered a Cars Brooks and his wife Marie just on the streets around town. I remember when we didn't have these lawn care services. Now most of us, someone takes care of our yard for us and no one was in that business. Uh, that is, except for Mr. Cars. Now, he, I, I don't, son, your dad, the way I'll always remember him is the little guy on the tractor. And the reason I say that is, is there were so, we were trying to build a church and money was tight. Uh, the money we spent back then, I think, uh, 61, uh, Benji, that's like 230,000, I think. I, I don't know what that is today, but probably a million or two, if, at least. We didn't have a lot of people to work with. We didn't have a lot of rich guys like you guys on the front row back those days. And so I, uh, I know you appreciate that. But anyway, uh, we just didn't, and we did the best we could. And anyway, when I first encountered your dad and then your mom, they helped me in so many ways with this six acres over here in getting a church built. So I will always remember them. I will always treasure them as dear, dear friends of mine because they were. When I first uh, met your folk, uh, I was, in fact, Carson said, come by the house a minute, and I did, and, and I visited, and, and uh, as long as, as I live, I'll always think of the house right down here with the log cabin style, that's, that's the Carson Brooks place, that's where Marie and Carson live, that's just, that's just the way it was, that's the way it'll always be. Then later on, uh, your mother started, we got in the new church, she started coming to church with us, and 
I remember, and I do remember, I remember, I saw lots of people join Pauline Baptist over a span of 25 years, but I remember the morning that she joined our church. Son, I remember the morning you joined our church, and as you said this morning, I baptized you. And I remember that Sunday morning, and some people came on profession of faith, and here comes Mrs. Brooks. And she said, Brother Bud, the Lord is my Savior, and I want to be a part of Pauline Baptist Church. And I don't think I've ever been any more excited than I was that Sunday morning. Then later you came, and your family became so near and so dear to me. And, and Joel, I just want you to know, son, that like you said to me, I'll say back to you and to your family and to all these people here today, yes, son, you are blessed. Have a good mother and dad. Your mother, to me, was a very special lady. I know she's special to you guys. So I said, Joel, I said, is there anything in particular that you would like me to say at Mom's memorial service today? And he said, well, yeah, there's some things. Uh, let me think. And then he said, there's something I want you to tell. And, and, and I don't know whether this will fit or not. Well, it's going to fit, okay? He said back in 37 and 38, any of y'all old enough to remember that? Probably not. But 37 and 38. I discovered America in 39, okay? I was born March 3rd, 39. But anyway, 37 and 38. See, we think of going to Little Rock today. We think about jumping in a car, and an hour and 30 minutes later, we've arrived and doing business. That's it. It hadn't always been that way, kids, I'm telling you. So there was no, really, there was no transit down here. No way up there, no way back, unless you were fortunate enough to know somebody that just might own an automobile. And so it was Miss Marie and two of her sisters who constantly pounded on them, made several trips to Little Rock. And the bus service that we have today in our city, and I was unaware of this until today, it got here because Miss Marie and two of her sisters wouldn't give up. She thought we deserved a bus service in this part of the world. So you probably don't ride a bus anymore, but if you ever get on one, you might remember that story and remember that, who knows, maybe we wouldn't have a bus service today had it not been for these people that were so persistent. Your mother were, was a lot of things. Um, among them, she was a very hard worker. Now, I've always admired people that will work. Now, most people, when I say that, chuckle because they think, you don't know anything about work. Really, I do. And, uh, Brother Meeks, I, I'm not doing any bragging today, but I probably work about as hard as the next guy. David Taylor doesn't believe that, but you believe it. And I admire people that work. She was a hard working precious lady. Never one time in all the years that I knew her when I was at Pauline Baptist, that's been a long time ago. I've been gone from there for almost 17 years, but uh, anyway, she was, and your entire family, you not only worked hard, but you were the most cooperative people. I couldn't have asked for people to be any nicer. Let me tell you something. Most of you never pastored church, but let me tell you. It is the people that are cooperative. The people that are supportive. It's the people that not only encourage you, but pray for you. They never have a negative thing for you. It's always positive. Those are the kind of people that keep the preacher going. So I always admired your mother for that. I was thinking of scripture today that might characterize Miss Marie, and, and I hope I've chosen the right ones. You remember, and I think this sums it up. And by the way, when we've come to the end of our road, if they can say this of us, hey, we've done quite well. 
You remember the occasion when they had this precious oil, they called it spike and oil, oil and, and uh, you remember how that Mary and Martha were busy and Martha was busy keeping a house like most women like to do. Mary slipped around and got this precious ointment that was for special occasions. She began to pour it on her hands and began to anoint our Lord, our Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer. And Judas detested it and he said, you wasted all that could have been used or even sold for money and uh, this is all a waste. And Jesus said something of that lady that's been sounded around the world again and again. Jesus said, Judas, leave her alone. She had done what she could. Can you think of anything better to be said of any of us, me and our women? They did what they could. There's another scripture in the Old Testament. And this scripture asks a question. It's Proverbs chapter 30, verse 10. I'm sorry, 31 and 10. But anyway, it asks a question. Who can find a virtuous woman? That just means a good person, a good lady. And then he goes on to say her price is far above rubies. In other words, I never have one of these, Joel, that I don't think about my mother. You told me today, son, that you got to live by her nearly all of your life. And you were blessed because I only lived near my mother for the first 20 years. My mother's still living. In fact, you motivated me today to call my mother and to tell her I love her which I try to do regularly. But anyway, mothers, now guys, being a father's mother, we're the head of the house. According to Scripture, we are. But I'm going to tell you something. It's usually the mother in a home that's the glue that holds it together. I'm talking about the family. For the most it is. Because there's so much time spent with the children and all this type thing. And by the way, girls have a way of, I don't know, they have a gift of being more emotional and more loving and kind for the most. Now, I'm bragging on you girls than most of us guys have. We're kind of roughshod boys. And so, who can find a virtuous woman? Her price is far above rubies. In other words, it can't be bought. There is no... Uh, um, no way you could say this is what a virtuous woman is worth because it's millions or whatever. And then he goes on to list all the good things that a mom is. And I like this, and I won't keep you long, but I like the part where it talks about how she plants the garden. We can relate to that. I like the part where, and I don't have time to get into this, but how she takes the wool and, uh, and how that she makes the clothing and the tapestry that the scriptures call it. And there's a part in there that, that, that I'll always love where it talks about her light goes not out by night. Now all the things I did as a kid, as a teenager, I never remember coming home at night that mom wasn't up waiting. Dad always had to go to bed because he had to go to the to work the next morning. But mom was there. And I know you had that experience. Now, here's the beauty of it. And then Solomon said about this virtuous woman, he said, and her children or child shall rise up and call her blessing. And that's the way you feel about it. Now, folk, we sang about heaven a while ago, and I'm about finished. How beautiful heaven must be. Billy Mitchell, I believe as much as I stand here today that as soon as someone that's a believer in Christ, as soon as they die, they're alive forevermore in the presence of God. Amen. So it's not goodbye. It's just so long for a while. To be absent from the body or the flesh is to be in the presence of the Lord for all of those who believe in Christ. And so we've come to a time in the life of Miss 
Marie Brooks when we say so long for just a little while. And I paused there because I want you to notice I said for just a little while. Folk, life is so brief. It's not just fragile, it's brief. It doesn't last long. And it's a wonderful experience. And it's a preparation for that city that God has built for all who believe. And so I want to leave you with this thought. One day, 2,000 years ago, Christ hang upon an old rugged cross, shed his blood for the remission of all of our sins. And those who believe, those who accept, one of these days, we'll not only sing about how beautiful heaven must be, we'll see it. Somebody said, oh, I'm not worthy of that. Well, friend, if you wait till you get worthy to go to heaven, you won't ever get there. You don't go to heaven because you're worthy. You go to heaven because of God's grace extended to all of us. Amen? Shall we bow in prayer? Father, for your promises, we're grateful. For all the good things you've given us in life, we thank you. For the memories, Father, of this dear lady. Father, we thank you. We thank you for people that reached out and helped us when we needed help the most. Bless this man. In Jesus' name.